Hello everyone, this is Dr. Mike and this is Saving Savvy. And today I'm going to talk about why new photographers may consider not watching photography videos on YouTube or certainly to cut back on them. But first I have to rant about something else. So I'm doing this, you see the angle is a little bit different. That's because I'm using the camera in my 15 inch 19, uh, 2017 MacBook Pro. Now this was an upgraded MacBook Pro, um, 16 gigabytes of memory, two terabytes uh, solid state drive, etc, etc, etc. This computer has not been a good computer. I can't really connect to my external camera right now. In recent times I've had to replace the battery which, was, battery, which is actually exploding out of the case. I've had to replace the keyboard. Um, when it went in for diagnostics they replaced the touch bar. They did something with the display. More recently they took it in for another diagnostic. They replaced the motherboard and it just crashed on me. Ugh, rant, rant. Anyway, so why am I telling new photographers to watch less of these videos? Mainly because I think they've gone kind of to the dark side. And despite what these popular YouTube channels are saying, the, their their products or their, their videos are more and more commercials and less and less informational. So I know this will get the wrath of everyone on me uh, because I'm going to name, or actually I'm going to imply some certain people that everyone will know anyways. Um, and these some of these people are quite popular. Obviously, they have a million viewers. Uh, but in one instance, I, or I'm thinking of two instances from a, a husband and wife team. In one video, the question was, do you really need 60 megapixels? And what the husband of the team did was he took images from an iPhone, which is I think is around 12 megapixels, a standard 24 megapixel camera, then he took images from this new 60 megapixel camera, and then he did a stacking thing where he had a 250 megapixel image. Now we all know that if you put tons more megapixels, in a, and especially with better lenses and other things, you're going to have a finer detailed picture. But the important question is, does that really matter? And unfortunately, his methodology was just bad. All right, I'm going to say it. Psychologically, it was bad. How can I say that? Because I'm an expert in behavior. Yes, I really am. Um, so how is it bad? Well, if you look at an image, he was, so he took these images and he blew them up to this huge size, right? But he didn't actually make prints that big. What he did was he printed on his regular printer, just standard size prints of a section of the image. So you were looking at a super crop. Naturally, uh, a, a iPhone image on a super crop is going to look like crap. We know that, right? And we can assume that the 60 megapixel image is going to look better than it, and it's going to look better than the 24 megapixel image. But the problem is, is that when you have a huge image, psychologically, you stand back, you take the whole image in, when you stand back, you take a bunch of other things in too, like the color, the composition, all these different things, and that's what you're looking at. That That's why you say this is a great image or this image kind of sucks. When you take a little crop of a test image and you're looking at it like this, right, what are you going to see? Nothing that's terribly relevant to the overall image. It would have been so much better if he would have taken that iPhone image and said, how can I, how big can I blow this up using every trick up my sleeve? I'm going to throw it into Photoshop and do all sorts of special editing. I'm going to maybe add a little noise or sharpening or take away sharpening or do whatever I'm going to do to make this image look as good as I can can make it. And I'm even going to use some sort of extrapolation program to to artificially increase the size or the number of pixels to have that look better too. What does that look like? Maybe compare that to a 60 megapixel image standing eight feet away from them. That might be interesting, right? But not the way he presented it. But unfortunately, it's going to make new photographers think, oh my God, I can't take pictures with my iPhone. I've got to get this uber expensive uh, camera with these uber expensive lenses and deal with it. Maybe buy a new computer because I can't process these giant files and, you know, way overboard. That couple also had what to me, in my opinion, seemed like an outright commercial. It was a commercial that, or was it was a YouTube video where they were shooting a lot of wildlife, a lot of birds in flight kind of stuff. Now I have great um, uh, admiration for them for them to ability to do this. I cannot. I mean, I, I, I take one of those giant lenses and I point up in the sky and I just see sky. I can't even find birds. So I'm not criticizing the fact that, I think it's great that they can do this, but this the, the video was sponsored by KEH, which was stated. However, all throughout the video, they were saying things like, well, I know if you can't afford this super expensive lens, you could buy a used one on KEH. Well, that might be fine too, 
But if this was truly a non-commercial, if this was truly an unbiased video, if I was doing it, I'd say, you could buy it from KDH, you could buy it off of eBay, you could buy it from all these photo uh, websites and, and uh, posting places where people sell the equipment. You could buy it from B&H, you could buy it from Adorama, you could look on Amazon. I mean, there'd be so many other ways that a person could get the best price possible. And in, in some of those instances, even have a guaranteed product, it was with the exception of just going to KEH. It was a commercial, but it was sold as an informational video. What really frosted me was another video from another very popular YouTuber, guy with very big hair. Um, this was a guy, I, I'd never, I think early on, I kind of liked his videos. He would talk about his grandma and you know, give me a dollar to buy her a cup of tea or something. I thought it was kind of cute. Um, and he was kind of a gearhead uh, for sure. But, you know, he seemed pretty pleasant and everything. But he was very opinionated. Well, his opinions have just gone through the roof with popularity. Um, and the, he had a video that I actually was clickbait, but I, I watched the whole damn thing because I thought he was going to say something in the end, which he never said, which was that it's official. The DSLR is dead. I'm thinking, oh my God, did Nikon or Canon make an announcement? Is this what, what? So I watched this whole stupid video, which was basically a commercial for the Sony A9, right? Well, the DSLR is dead because the Sony A9 has more focus points and it has more this and it has more this and more this. And more this. Oh, okay, I know, the Sony A9 is a fantastic, wonderful, awesome, and incredibly expensive camera. What does it have to do with the DSLR being dead? It's a great camera. It was a commercial, and it kind of bugged me. So if you're, but if you're, so I'm an old, crusty old guy, I watch those things, and I, I can kind of at least spot that it's a commercial. But if you're new, you're gonna probably think, well, I gotta get an A9. I gotta get these super expensive lenses. But let's face it. Oh, and or how about the prognosticators? You know, you watch the video, I predict that the na less, the next Sony camera will have two card slots and a bigger battery. Amen. Right? Oh, I got it wrong, but I'm going to predict in this one too. Why do I care what some rumor says about some camera that I don't need? Right? When that camera comes out, there'll be plenty of time to know if it's the camera that I want. And there's about 500 other cameras that I could buy between now and then. But if I anticipate, oh, two card slots, I might want to buy. So that bugs me too. So if you are a new photographer, what should you be thinking about if it's not gear? And again, I'm a complete gear nut. What should you be thinking about? Composition, probably the most important thing. Capturing emotion, the quality of light that you're using, how to get better quality light. Things like that are critically important and can take even an iPhone photo and make it beautiful. Doing not doing those things can you could have the best camera in the world and your picture is going to be boring or look like crap. Yes, it is important to understand the controls of your camera. But even if you had a pretty basic DSLR or mirrorless camera, you have all these controls at your disposal. Spend time and understand simple concepts like aperture priority or uh, sh the shutter speed. Understand a little bit more about depth of field. See how you can ma manipulate your your um, your your white balance or your uh, exposure compensation or other things and how that's going to impact the picture. Use your little pop-up flash to see if it makes a difference, especially in a backlit situation. Learn these things and your pictures will become immensely better. Now, are there videos that I would recommend? I think if you go back a couple of years, there are some videos from particular um, uh, YouTubers that were just excellent. So if you look at some of the, Gavin Hoey now does mostly just product ads, uh, but in the past he did these wonderful videos. I watched one the other day that I probably have seen three times. It's one where he uses a single flash in the woods with this hooded woman. And just by moving that flash around, his pictures dramatically changed. It was inspirational. He took that video or that image and he threw it into a photo editor, added some light beams, made her glow a little bit, and he made the picture even better. When I watch that video, I get excited. I want to get out and play around with the flash. I want to fool around with the photo editor. I want to learn a little bit more about something thing. How awesome is that? There's another guy, Mike Brown. His early, he's now, he has a lot of, I think he does like photo tours and stuff like that. Uh, and I think he sells some products. But his early videos were super awesome. He is such a great teacher, showing you how changing the aperture affects the depth of field using close pins on a line, or the best way to angle a shot, or how to use a flash, or the importance of a tripod. Awesome, awesome stuff. 
Another great guy was Mark Wallace. Now, I, he's kind of in and out um, at this time, but his earlier videos were phenomenal. And I remember watching a video that he did using Nikon's creative lighting system. This is the one where the little flash, I think that's what you call it, little flashes of light from your, your flash that's mounted on the camera can control um, other flashes and coordinate them. Well, I was trying to understand that at the time, and it was like impossible. I'm like reading these, these horribly written pamphlets, uh, uh, not pamphlets, but instructions. I watched his video, boom, the heavens open, and I completely understood it. Those are videos you should watch. There's some people that are currently on, too, that I, I like. Just two that I can mention, um, uh, I'm sure there's many more. Joe Edelman, this is a guy that I'm just starting to watch his stuff. He is he seems like a photographer's photographer. He looks a little quirky and he presents kind of quirky stuff, but he is so smart when he talks about this photography and giving you such basic information in such an elegant way. Thumbs up to him, watch those videos. And if you want to have some fun, if you want to sit and have coffee co coffee clutch with someone who loves gears, gear stuff, um, uh, Peter Gregg. He's the Christmas tree guy. Uh, he's, he's a room that's 20, you know, 365 days of the year is, is decorated for Christmas. You gotta love that, right? And he loves his gear and he talks about his gear um, and he, he gives you his opinion on his gear. But he would be a great guy if he was like your neighbor. You'd want to sit down next to him, have a cup of coffee and talk for two hours about camera lenses or something. Um, so that's another great resource. So I would suggest to think carefully about what you do watch and don't watch stuff that's going to make you want to just buy stuff or make you feel bad about yourself. It's just not worth it. And if you get some time, look at some of my other venues. Um, I haven't done my podcast for a while, but it's out there on YouTube, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed. I, I also do a weekly blog that has all sorts of intimate details about me. It's drmikekuna.com, D-R-M-I-K-E-K-U-N-A.com. Read that if you wish. And um, I just talked about my wife leaving me. She wouldn't really leave me, but you'll have to read the blog to get the rest of that. Anyways, everyone, thanks for watching this long video. I know I make two long videos. If you stay to the end, God bless you. Take a, uh, have a good day and goodbye. Bye.